Hi everyone and welcome back. I am finally sat here and ready to film my nighttime skincare routine. I have zoomed the camera in a bit um, so if you think why do I look like this it's because I've zoomed the camera in basically. Um, I've got all my skincare here next to me and a while ago now because obviously I felt ill in between then and now I put a Q&A poll question thing on my Instagram and you sent in quite a few questions so if you see me looking down it's because my phone's on my lap because I have nowhere else to put it so yeah that's why I keep looking down I'm not like like I'm not a weirdo so I'm gonna get straight into the first question and the first part of my skincare so I use a lot of the ordinary um I actually got introduced to the ordinary by Josh, one of my really close friends, um, and I go in with hyaluronic acid, it's 2% plus B5, and I go in with that first. Do you know what, I'm actually gonna, I have this empty glass here, I'm gonna see if I can prop my phone up, source for the unorganisation, and it's worked. So my phone is now there, okay, otherwise I'd have to hold the mirror and up, it would be a mess. Anyway, so hyaluronic acid, got introduced to it by my friend Josh. Um, if I'm sounding a bit tired, it's because I am. It's like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, so the first question is, where did you interest in me? And the honest answer is Tinder. We accidentally matched on Tinder. Tristan was closer to me. Um, and I think he actually changed his um, radius, is that the right word? So like he had a broader scouting perimeter, I suppose. Is that what, is that the right thing to say? I don't know. So yeah, he basically opened more of his options and um, we actually matched on his birthday, which is the 22nd of December. We were speaking all the way through Christmas. We met, I think, I think it was Boxing Day. He turned up at my workplace, um, surprised me with a Costa coffee. It did have milk in it and I am lactose intolerant, but you have to let him off because he obviously didn't know. Um, yeah, so Tinder. Next question is how did you get into skincare? Um, and I'm just gonna go in with some nice cinnamide i always say that wrong and it's the 10 percent plus zinc one percent i am nearly out of this but i do have a fresh bottle of course i do um and long story short with that question um my as i've literally mentioned completely forgot that was even a question my really close friend josh um i think you would have seen him in a vlog before absolute gem like i've known him for so long he's such a beautiful person um he showed me it. we were walking around canterbury um this is after i've had opal because i've known josh for years we he walked around uh sainsbury's canterbury and he introduced me to the ordinary because i was having some really bad hormonal breakouts at the time and he is the one that got me into hyaluronic acid and niacinamide so thank you josh <laughs> next question is my fave skincare product um that's really hard um favorite skincare product god how do you choose just one i'm gonna have to say i'm just gonna go with niacinamide because not just because it's the one that i'm using now and it's the easiest but look how lovely and like shiny it makes my face but yeah, at the moment I'm going to say that because I do like the way it feels my skin. But I also like my B Mario Bedescu Super Collagen Mask. Actually, no, that's my favourite. My Super Collagen Mask by Mario Bedescu. If you haven't got it, invest in it. It's a little bit pricey, but it makes the skin look so good afterwards. So 100% recommend that. Um, next question is you said i know you said no more babies but why don't you want any more babies um okay so i have me and tristan have one child together and i wasn't actually expecting to get pregnant so um 
I had, I got tired of an operation on my ovaries. It was, I had a cyst. I've said this so many times in my vlogs. Um, and when he was like doing the laparoscopy, he said that I had endometriosis of the ovary and that that lessens my risk of having children. And he said, by the looks of it, it's quite severe in that ovary. Um, I wish I kept the paperwork because I had all the paperwork at some point, but I've moved around so much. I don't have that one particular paperwork. And I also don't have my paperwork from the l previous lumbar puncture we had. Um, cause I wanted to take that with me. I've completely gone off track, but I've, yeah, I'm missing a load of paperwork basically. It's probably in the bin somewhere in Guildford, but, um, yeah. And then I had a really, well, I still suffer with anorexia, but I, I wouldn't say I'm anorexic. I am doing really well in my recovery and I screwed some things up then. Um, and you know, I lost my period for such a long time. I thought I'd done some severe damage. Um, so I, I came off the implant. I feel like this is, I've really messed up the story, but I came off the implant because I was having complications and the lady at the um, sexual health clinic told me that she wouldn't put me on anymore because I am at risk of getting ovarian cysts and it was the middle of COVID and she didn't want me to have to have an operation to remove a cyst because my last one was really bad. I had to have an operation to remove it, like I just said. Um, completely forgot about my hypertension. So I got pregnant. Then they said, when I spoke to them, I was like, look, I need to go on some form of contraception because I really don't want another child, especially soon after having Opal. I didn't want another one like, whoa. I need time to recover um and then the lady said well you've got your ovarian cyst so that rules out this and then you've also got hypertension um intracranial hypertension unexplained you can't have this so that just gives you this one that we can try so that's what i'm on now um so i didn't think i could have children long story short i've just gone on a huge rant um and obviously opal was like a really really lovely surprise um and I don't know, I've always accepted the fact that I didn't think I could have children, so I didn't expect to have children. So I was sort of fine with that. Um, I don't know whether that would have affected me later on in life. I don't know. Um, but to be honest with you, like, I just don't want like any more. It's really hard to explain because a lot of people are like, oh, you'll change your mind, you're young. But Tristan's sort of like on the same wavelength, like he doesn't want any more children, like we're, ha we're completely content. I had such a awful labour and I know you'll say like every labour is different, but I'd like almost died. So I really don't want to go through that again. I'm still recovering dip from like the labour now and she's nearly a year old. So it's just not for me, like childbirth isn't for me. Pregnancy was really difficult. It had quite a stressful pregnancy. Um, not because of complications, um, there was quite a lot of complications at the start of my pregnancy, um, but we had a lot of family stress, um, which I won't go into because it's quite personal, personal, pers yeah, personal, it's personal to Tristan, so I'm not going to go into it, but we did have some people cause a lot of stress, um, and it was really unacceptable, um, so our pregnancy was quite stressful, um, then we had to find somewhere to live, and I don't know, I just... I just view it all in a bit of a negative way like Opal is the biggest positive that's ever happened to my life but everything else is really negative like giving birth pregnancy I just didn't enjoy it um whereas other people love it they love carrying a child they love childbirth it's just not for me um and cost wise having a baby is so expensive and I don't have the money to have another child right now and I just think that's being sensible so basically I'm content with what I have. I really don't see myself being a mum of two, let alone like five. I'm completely happy with just Opal. Um, and I wanna focus on raising her. Like that's just my mission, to be honest. Just Opal is it's enough for me. And Tristan is exactly, is exactly on the same wavelength. Um, if my mind changes in two years time, I hope it doesn't basically. I'm just, it's just not for me. Like I know it's a hard one to explain. I feel like I've been all over the shop, but I just don't I just don't want another one and Tristan doesn't either he's actually on the waiting list to get the the snip I'm gonna call it the snip because I don't know the medical term for it I always say hysterectomy but that is the I'm sure that's the women's version anyway let's move on happiest memory oh, happiest memory oh god that's really difficult 
Um, I'm going to move on to the next part before I answer this question because I am just answering the questions now. Um, and I'm just going to let you know that I do normally do a different skincare routine. So every other day I do a retinol. Um, it's why I'm getting a bit of a breakout around here. Um, yeah, I use a retinol basically. I need to stop ranting because I've already filmed for 12 minutes and it's going to be a lot of footage. Um, Happiest memory is a really hard one. Um, I'm now using the CeraVe PM facial mo facial moisturising lotion. Facial moisturising lotion. God, I'm so tired. Um, and I love this moisturising lotion. Have to be honest. Um, so happiest memory. God, how do you even answer that? I would say because when um, I had opal we were living in my parents house because covid um meant tristan couldn't find another job we wouldn't be able to rent anywhere um and we were on the waiting list for a an affordable housing scheme and when opal was almost six months i think it was six months i always get the dates mixed up we got told that we'd been accepted into this flat um, and I actually think the day that we moved in, finally got our own space. Oh, is it focused? Yeah. The day we moved in and finally got our own space was one of the happiest memories for us. That and when Ophel said Dada for the first time, because it was so nice to look at Tristan's face. Like, it was just so adorable. He was just so in love. Um, I love watching... Tristan and Opal bond and grow together. He is such a good dad. Um, so let's move on to the next question. Who came up with the name Opal? Tristan came up with the name Opal. Um, he wanted to call her Luna and personally it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. I know someone's dog called Luna and it just put me off. Um, so Tristan came up with Opal and I can't remember where he saw it or got it from. Um, and I thought it was a really good name and then I chose Grace so her name is Opal Grace and then with regards to like the surname my last name's Windsor and Tristan's last name is Taylor and we're not married um if you speak to Tristan he's got plans like he keeps popping like oh what engagement ring would you like where would we get married so Tristan's full-on in wedding mode at the moment um but when we do get married we will be so her last name is Windsor Taylor so I thought do you know what our relationship was still so fresh and I wanted her to have both of our names in because you never know what's going to happen we had a lot of stress a lot of people getting involved in our relationship which was really like uncalled for um and I wanted her to have both of our names in there just in case anything happened. And I did the same, like when we went to get her birth certificate signed, we got three copies of the birth certificate. One for me, one for Tristan and one for Opal. Just because if anything happens down the line, like I'm pretty sure me and Tristan are endgame. But you never know what's going to happen. Um, I wanted, in case things got nasty or in... Not that I would ever keep Opal from him. I'm a big thing of like the dad should be with the child as long as the dad can be trusted, as long as the dad is a responsible parent, depending on the situation, obviously. But if there's nothing wrong with the dad, then the dad should be involved. So I thought it'd be a good idea to get three separate birth certificates. We have folders. I've got a folder. Opal's got a folder. Tristan's got a folder. So everyone has a copy. And I think that's one of the best decisions I've ever made because you can never predict the future. Um, you never know what people are gonna, like, gonna do. Like, just like a hypothetical scenario. If Tristan was to cheat on me tomorrow, I wouldn't stay with him because that's just unacceptable to me. Um, obviously not that he would do that. That's not what I'm saying. The whole situation is hypothetical. So if he cheated on me tomorrow, I wouldn't stay with him. And I wouldn't keep Opal from him either. But you know when feelings are a bit rife, you might say things you don't mean. Um, and even so, if we're not together, God forbid, he has a copy of her birth certificate, which I think is really important. Um, it's also good in case we lose one. We've got three. Um, so yeah, she's Opal Grace Windsor Taylor. She's got both of our um, last names. And if we get married, Tristan will be Tristan Windsor Taylor and I will be Beth Windsor Taylor. 
so we'll all be the same hopefully eventually but at the moment she is Opal Grace Windsor Taylor, I am Beth Windsor and Tristan is Tristan Taylor. Okay, that makes sense. I think I explained that. I feel like I'm going really in depth in these questions um, and I've not got much skincare left to do. Literally just lip balm. Um, how will you be celebrating Opal's first birthday? We are having a picnic bonanza. So hopefully the weather's on our side we'll be going to our local park we've invited quite a few people i'm not sure how many people are actually turning up at this point um we will be going to the local park everyone's going to bring their own picnic their own picnic blankets my mum is actually making the cake and we're just going to celebrate her birthday like that if it's raining we'll all be in the apartment but i'm really hoping the weather's on our side because there's quite a few people coming i believe um to be honest though, I'm not actually that sad if people don't come because it's just Opal's day, you know what I mean? And people have their own lives, but yeah, I'm really excited. So yeah, it's like a Peter Rabbit picnic, teddy bear. Oh, I'm just, I'm just so excited. Um, Favourite quality about Tristan would be the way he has bonded with Opal, which um, I think surprised a lot of people. Um, a lot of people were quite negative towards him. In the beginning um which is really upsetting for me because he deserves more credit than people gave him and um yeah the way he bonds with opal the way he like he's just in love with opal like sometimes i think do you know what about me i was hit first um but no he's just such a good dad and it's been really nice for me to watch like the day she was born that instant bond they had like the cuddles they were having and it's literally carried on throughout like I'm just so proud of him for putting up he put up with a lot of shit and I'm so proud for him proud of him for coming on the other side and being the best dad he can be going out and earning the money he's he's just such a hard worker and I'm just yeah I just I love Tristan <laughs> um how was sex after having a baby Okay, so I'm honest and open, so if you don't like details, then skip to the next question, but it was rough and not in a good way. So we waited quite a long time to have sex because I had some severe stitches. Opal's big head literally parted the Red Sea. So I had a lot of stitches. Um, it was very uncomfortable and the first two attempts really, really hurt. It was honestly like sandpaper. Um but she stitched me up a good and like she's given me a designer vagina and i'm very happy so thank you nurse for giving me a designer vagina um and she looks pretty good not gonna lie since having a baby she is looking pristine i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say it um but no it was really upsetting actually because me and tristan had a really good sex life before having a baby and even during pregnancy which is a bit of a taboo subject um sex actually sent us to a and e when i was pregnant with opal and we got top we got put on a sex ban um but anyway after birth it was horrific we waited i think it was seven no six months i think and it wasn't very nice it was sore um, and tristan was very understanding he was such a good guy about it and we just did like little bits at a time lots of lubricant oh my god that's one thing i'm gonna tell you L use lube if you have had stitches after birth, use lube, okay? Um, can you film your exercise routine, please? Not really there yet, if I'm honest. Who is someone you look up to? I'm gonna leave this as the last question um, because there was more questions than I remembered. Um, so, do you know what? I'll let you into a secret. When I was in school, my idol was two people. Um, I looked up so much to my nan, like my nan was my world when I was younger, like honestly she's like my best friend which is really sad, sad but lovely. So my nan was definitely one of them and then as I grew up, um, this is going to be a really unexpected answer, but Stephen Hawking. I have always massively looked up to Stephen Hawking, the way his brain works, the way he's so inspirational um, and I bet you weren't expecting that either. So. That's probably gonna shock you but yeah Stephen Hawkins is my idol and he always has been um, and then as an adult I don't really have any idols I tend not to look up on anyone but Stephen Hawkins is my final answer <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna use my lip balm now and it is just the vitamin E skincare lip balm from Superdrug 
I know I've answered a lot of questions and hardly done any skincare, but this is my skincare routine, so be filming my morning skincare routine at some point thank you so much for watching i did try and answer as many of your questions as possible anyway, thank you so much for watching i hope you have a brilliant day week month i'll see you in the next video